Hi everybody, this is Karen Virgil, Creative Katie. Welcome to the creation ship. Today we're going to make masterboard magic. I'm going to show you step by step how to make this vintage looking masterboard. And then in the second half of the video, we're going to take this and turn it into multiple projects. So to start off, I'm using an 11 by 17 piece of paper. This is just plain old copy paper. And I grabbed some vintage papers from my stash. I also have a whole bunch of tissue collage papers, bits and bobs that I have, and I just determined to start working down that stash. So this is tissue paper, and I was just doing some printmaking on it, some random stuff with just black acrylic paint. That's all that's on here. I think this was a shelf liner but you could do the same with a stencil and you're going to see that. So I'm just ripping these out and I'm starting to layer it up, gluing it down with fluid matte medium. Now the tissue paper, that part goes translucent and you see whatever you've printed on it comes through, but it also adds tex texture, which is going to add to our master board. A master board, we just want multiple layers. You don't have to worry about the end product because you don't know how you're going to use it. So here's one where I've used some stencils and I've put paint through the stencils again onto tissue paper. And I'm just putting that down. I'm not overthinking this. I'm working fairly quickly. And I, that's a tip that I give you. Don't overthink it at this stage. What will be will be put it down, do it quickly, and then when you get to the end, that's when you can start working on it. I have some vintage papers here. I'm loving these pink flowers. I don't like the straight edges, so I'm ripping those off. I like the ripped edges better. And, you know, I'm just auditioning it in a couple places and then putting it down. These are all vintage papers. Some of these I've collected and sourced from a variety of places. They're free printables. I just want that vintage feel in the background. I'm also wanting layers. Little bits of this are going to peek through. So once I have a rough idea about where I want things, then I'm going to glue them down. I've just filled this up. I've got some stickers here with numbers. I'm putting those down. And then gluing it down. I'm using the Fluid Matte Medium by Liquitex. You could use gel medium. The gel medium that I typically use is from the Crafters Workshop. And to get it to adhere, I'm just using the key card there. And that's just making sure that I've got good adhesion because I know I'm going to be cutting this master board up and however way I choose to utilize it down the road, but I want to make sure that all those layers stay put. So take a little extra time and, you know, make sure you've got that good adhesion. Now, if you have Mod Podge or Deco Podge, you can use that. But I would stick with the matte finish. I've got some swirls here. And right now, this is very random. I do not have a plan. I have no plan for how I'm going to use it or what route it's going to take. So here I'm putting some more of these numbers on. I'm thinking, you know, I have this again. Making a master board is a great way to use up those bits and bobs, those things that you have in your stash. Somehow, at some point, it all comes together. And it feels so good to be able to use stuff you have. So if you're looking at this right now and you're thinking, hot mess, Karen, you're right. I'm thinking the same thing. But the master board goes through an ugly stage and I'll point out the minute that it 
gels, that everything comes together. And I'll point out this technique that I use in this one for this masterboard that makes that happen. I'm putting the text up and down, sideways, um, because again, with the masterboard, I don't know how I'm going to use it, what orientation. So I like the randomness of it. Re creating a masterboard is a great thing to do when you're stuck because you're just going through the motions, you're gluing stuff down. In the end, it's, you're going to have something wonderful, but it doesn't require a lot of thought. So it helps blow through some of those um, when you're stuck. Now I'm giving this a good dry. There's lots of layers there, so it did take a long time to dry. And once it's dry, I'm just cutting off the excess by flipping it upside down and just getting rid of all those excess piece pieces. So it's still not really coming together. But here, before I go, I'm just making sure everything's glued down. In my tissue paper stash, I have this pink, which I was kind of drawn to. I had that those pink flowers that I put in earlier. Love swirls. So I'm thinking, you know what? I'm just going to put this napkin. Now these this is not on tissue paper. This is on it was a pink napkin that actually had a deer head on it and I just stenciled over top of it wasn't going to use the napkin as it was and but look at how it just adds to this masterboard so if you got a napkin that you don't love or you've loved and lost you it's time to you know you want to get rid of it stencil on top of it turn it into something else and use it as collage paper I'm really loving that plum, that pink in there. Oh, I found this t napkin that I did stenciling on, but I decided, you know what, enough's enough. I've got too much going on here. I think I'm ready to move to the next step. And once everything's dry, Here's the next step. And this is the technique that makes it all work together. I am brayering on, this is unbleached titanium. And as I go, it just kind of knocks things back and it magically makes everything work together. What was just all these papers glued down, now it's starting to look like a background. So I'm just putting it up and down and horizontally, straight up, straight. I keep it straight, I don't go diagonal. And I'm using my two and a half inch, I think that's the Ranger um, brayer. And you're gonna see me using the brayer again. It's a great tool and if you don't have it, you need it. Then I'm adding some Naples yellow here because I liked that golden color from some of those vintage papers and I just wanted to bring it out a little bit and brayering it in on, you get those little pops, but it's not solid. And I love that look. Now this stencil, it's a new one from the Crafters Workshop. It's called Swirling Waves. I am putting thick gesso through it and I'm, but this time I'm applying with a key card usually I apply with my fingers which you can do I just thought oh I'll do it with a key card and I'm just putting this in a few places again I don't I'm not using this as a solid background the whole piece so I don't have to worry about composition per se but I thought this will make a nice element and I love swirls so this is definitely going to be among some of my favorites now that's thick, so I need some drying time in here. And I'm liking that pop of white, the addition of that. So now I grabbed some vintage stamps and I'm just stamping a little bit more numbers, text onto the background. There's a little bit of black in there. You can see some of those tissue papers that I started, those first layers, there's just little bits peeking through. And that's okay. That's what you want. 
Then I grab this chicken wire reversed and I'm using Hooker's Green. For some reason I thought the green goes well with the pink. I kind of regretted the green. So you're gonna see me dealing with it later on. I like the small scale of the chicken wire reversed. I just don't know that that was the right color choice. But not every decision is a home run. And no matter what, there are ways of working around it. And I'm going to showcase those when we get to it. So here is the finished master board. Now the master board is finished when you decide that it is finished. Look at that grunge, look at that vintage feel. Now, just because I say the master board is finished doesn't mean that you won't tweak it or change it when you go to use it. It is the starting point. You could use it as an Insta background if there's a part that's just great and ready to go or you could either delete some of the elements that are on there or brew, or may add more as you need for whatever you're going to make. And that's what I'm going to show you when I make the next projects using this master board. But you got to admit this is a beautiful vintage master board. So I have templates that are cut the sizes of the things that I typically use. This is a six by six for either a mixed media board or card, a four by four fridge magnet, and I'm moving it on there. Here's five by seven. And just seeing, is there a part of this that I love that I would look really good on this size? And then you're making decisions. So I decide that I am going to do a seven by 10 art journal page with this section of the master board. I really like the swirls on there. I've cut it to size. Then I'm thinking, okay, now what can I make with this? Do I want a six by six? Ooh, I'm liking some of the parts and I move it around and you, it allows you to see exactly what will happen. Then I get the idea that I'm going to cut some shapes out of this and use those as collage elements on a background. And I decide to go with this puzzle shape. So I have this puzzle pattern that I think I believe I got from supercoloring.com. And I'm just kind of cutting out some tracers. And then I'm just tracing it out onto my master board. And I think I cut out six of them. In the end, I, I cut a six by six for a card, a seven by 10 for the art journal page, and six of these puzzle pieces. So I'm just going to cut everything out. Now, once that's cut out, I'm going to glue down the Insta background to my art journal page and I'm using gel medium. Because the master board is thicker, I find gel medium is preferred. And then I'm using that brayer to make sure I have great adhesion. And then once it's dry, I'm cutting off the excess. And there is the Insta background on my seven by 10 art journal page. I cut the square for the six by six card, five by five, and I'm just centering it on here so I have a border. And again, I'm using the brayer to make sure I get great adhesion. And then I have these puzzle pieces. And while I thought they would go good on a page, I really struggled. But I thought, you know what? I'm going to add a little bit more pink on them. Some of them were a little bland. I'm adding a little pink. And you could add any pattern at this stage. Remember that master board is just a starting point. It's not necessarily the end point. And then I decided, you know what? Usually I shade around things. So I grab my black acrylic paint and I shade around all the puzzle pieces. And I should say, I thought this was a good idea. 
as I go around and I do all six of them. Here I'm using my angle brush. This technique is called floating acrylic. It is my preferred way of shading because you use acrylic paint, which is permanent. And as you can see, it outlines them nicely, but it very much changes the look of them. So now I have the seven by 10, the six by six, and six of these puzzle pieces. So let's work on the seven by 10. Loving the swirls, love the colors. So I could put the sunflower, the reddish burgundy part of the sunflower goes with the red in the background. This butterfly would look lovely with the swirl in there. The color tone are just, just right. So I just go through various items in my stash and I find one that I like. Any one of those would have worked, but I love the angel. The colors in the angel really go well with the colors in the background. Then I grabbed the sentiment pack, my sentiment pack, Winged Wonders, and I go through and find a whole bunch of the sentiments that go with angels. And I'm additioning that to get an idea of the exact composition. Winged Wonders is one of my sentiment packs. It is ava available as a digital download at ninniesnapkins.com and I will put a link to it in the description box below. And if you're looking for a brayer, I believe Ninny has those too. So I'll link that. I'm adding a little bit more of that Naples yellow and you saw me take the white gesso and cover up some of that green stenciling. I didn't like it so much, I wanted to push it back. Here I'm more pushing it back. I'm taking the blue, because there's blue in that angel, and I'm using a script stamp. So on this background, I'm, I've pushed back some of the elements that I didn't like for this purpose, and I'm adding things to make it perfect for what I am putting on it and some of those final decisions you won't know. Then I take that blue and I'm just splattering, introducing a little bit of that blue into the background so it goes well with the blue that's in that angel's dress. I believe that angel is, is from a Stamperia Christmas collection. I'm a, I love angels. So I love that swirl and some of that because the angel is large, I'm gonna lose. So I decided to grab my white acrylic paint and just stencil some more of those swirls on there. I like that motif in the background. And now that I know what my focal image is, I know where I want to add swirls to just finish up the, the composition. Now these, all these sentiments, you can make them larger with your printer settings or make them smaller. I have a variety that I keep in those plastic envelopes. So then I'm just, I have the different sizes to addition on the page. I wanna cut off some of that excess white. So I trim it back till I like what I see. So there is basically my composition. Once I've got that settled, I just take my fluid matte medium and I glue down the sentiments and the angel. I'm giving it a good coat of the matte medium on top. That's going to seal the paper and help me when I add to it. I want her to hold something. I have a circle, a butterfly. I think about that flower. So I think, oh, I like that. This was from the Dollar Tree. And I put that there. I like how that looks. And I move on to some of the finishing details, shading or edging the page. And then I go and I'm shading on the angel as well. And you'll see as I do this, it's quite a bit sped up how this makes that angel 
stand out more from the background. loving how it all looks then I decide I look up and I see this sunflower that I had it's been sitting on my desk forever I thought that really goes well with the yellow that's in the background I and I just have a thing for sunflowers this season so I decide I p p take off the foam part because I want it flat to go into my art journal page and I'm just using some gel medium to glue it in place I just like that pop of yellow there then I grab, I'm adding a little bit more of the yellow in the background. And then I grab my gold splatter paint, my fan brush, and I give it a good splatter of gold because, well, I like my bling. And there we have a finished 7x10 art journal page. So here is the 6x6 card. This is a folded card from the Crafters Workshop. It comes with envelopes. And I find this butterfly in my stash has that little bit of pink. I like the swirl and the butterfly. And I decide to keep this one really, really simple. Every page doesn't have to be complicated. I decide to grab my fine line bottle I love these, it has thinned acrylic paint in it. And I'm going to outline the masterboard edition, but I'm just adding a little bit of edging with black acrylic paint. I'm just shading along very little here. I don't want it dark, dark, dark. And I apologize for my head in, in the way. And then I'm taking the fine line bottle and putting a line of gold paint all the way around. And it really goes well with those yellow golden tones in there and really elevates this card, I think. Once I do that, that has to dry. And once it's dry, I'm going to glue down my butterfly and my sentiment. So for this background, I used it exactly as it was from the master board. It was an Insta background, no additions made. I'm just basically doing finishing, putting on a focal image and a sentiment and a little bit of gold outlining. I'm adding a little bit of shading on the butterfly just to make it stand out a little bit more and then around the sentiment but I want to keep the colors soft. This says, let your dreams take flight. Oh, let your dreams be your wings, sorry. And then I grab the gold fine line bottle and go around. Now this gold paint has been in that fine line bottle for months and months and months. I can't remember the last time I used it. And there we have our card done. This would look lovely on a canvas too if you chose to do it on a six by six canvas board. So the puzzles, I really struggled with this. I hated the black on it. It was, it just didn't look right to me. It was causing me all sorts of grief. So I was ready to throw it out and then I thought maybe I can save it. So I grabbed rubbing alcohol and I bought this dispenser from the Dollar Tree, love it. You press down and you get it on your cloth and I'm rubbing it on and it's taking off the black acrylic paint. Now, so this is a trick and it, that you can use. Rubbing alcohol, this one I think is 90, 91%, it will take off acrylic paint. That a paint has been, been on there for at least two days. Now if I rub really hard, it's gonna take down several layers of paint. So you have to be selective and, and gentle but I was able to salvage these puzzle pieces 
by using the rubbing alcohol trick. Then I decided I wanted to add some swirls on here. I've added some pink where the color was off a little bit. I wanted to make them a little bit more interesting to stand out. So I'm adding pink using the same colors that were in the master board. Just adding some pink and then some of the Naples yellow. Here I'm just trying to salvage it. Then I grab that swirling waves and I'm adding some of the swirl motif on each one using the white acrylic paint. It's just brightening these up, knocking back some of that darkness that came from the black paint that was still there, even though I used the rubbing alcohol. But I no longer wanted to throw them in the garbage, so that's a win. Now I grab my fine line bottle. This time I have white acrylic paint and I'm adding a line all the way around it. This brightens it up, adds another detail to it. I'm kind of desperate because I really didn't know how I was going to use it. I'd played around with it on my art journal pages and different substrates, really had no ideas. Then I thought, well, maybe gold would look good on here. So I did three with white and then three with gold. Do you like the white or do you like the gold better? Maybe wait for your answer until I use them in the projects that I use them. You might change your mind. And there we have six puzzle pieces. I went on to Pinterest and found some sayings that would go with puzzles and I cut them out and I decided we're gonna go meant to be together and life is a puzzle and we are the pieces. And I thought this is where I was gonna end. I really didn't know how to do the background and I was just done with it. It was puzzle pieces. Then I said, I looked up, I saw my brayer, and I said, I'm just going to brayer this on the background. So this is unbleached titanium, and I just put it on the, these are five by seven card bases that I did my index card a day series on, and I'm just adding a brayered background. And then I come in with a little bit of white, very quick background but it was just enough. Then I grabbed my Elegant Script stamp and my Plum Archival ink, and I'm stamping some of that plum color into the background. Remember that pinkish color is in that master board. So I wanted something in the background that goes with it. And I'm liking the look of this. It was a quick, easy background, no fuss, no muss, but it works. So again, you don't always have to do complicated. And at this stage of the game, I just needed this to be done. I was, I was tired. I wanted to uh, close the door of the studio. So I grab some white acrylic paint and I brayer on top of where I put the script. And I did this just to knock the script uh, back a bit. I didn't want it as predominant as it was. So on one, I'm putting the two puzzle pieces with the white trim and one, a couple of them with the gold. Then I look, and again, I have these burgundy-ish, it was a gel print that I had used my press, my punch, and made some circles. And I thought, okay, I'm going to put those on the background. That contrast worked really well with the puzzle pieces. So I put that there just to introduce another color. It just gives the puzzle pieces a base to go with and adds something to the page. So these could have been five by seven cards.
and then I'm gluing down the sentiment. And again, I, I apologize for the angle. I've been experimenting with shorts and reels and the camera needs to be at different angles and, and held differently, positioned differently. And it's a learning curve. The tech, tech side of things is always more complicated than the creative part for me. Now I'm just gluing this down with gel medium. So here on these ones, I've used the master board to make the focal image, not as a background. So you have that option as well. I'm edging with a combination of quinacridone magenta and black. I didn't want to go straight black and I didn't want to go straight pink. So I mix those colors and it gives kind of a burgundy-ish tone. At the end, I show pictures of all the projects. So let me know which one's your favorite. Here I'm just adding some shading, making the focal image stand out, classic finishing 101, right? The same steps that we go with each page. So I hope in this video you got a couple ideas, you got inspired, maybe saw something you never knew before. Splatter with gold. And then I'm just outlining with my black Posca pen. I really have to adjust where the camera is, sorry. So let's see, here is the seven by 10 art journal page. I believe there are angels among us. My six by six card, let your dreams be your wings. And cards or just five by seven art journal pages meant to be together. Life is a puzzle and we are the pieces. And there are the four projects that we created using the one 11 by 17 master board. I hope you can take some of these ideas. Now go be creative.